Hey y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. We are on episode 117. It's another Thursday, so that means we've got another podcast for you. We've got a jam-packed show, so we're going to get right into it with my main man, the owner of Outdoor Legacy, Mr. Jason Robertson. How you doing, bud? I'm glad to know that I'm the main man. Main man. <laughs> I you am. Pay the I'm bills. doing. You pay the bills. That's right. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm doing good. What's going on tonight up your way? Well, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, you know, you and I've kind of hunted quite a bit with each other the last uh, last month or so. And you yeah. came up to Ben Wheeler last time I was down there in Nacogdoches County with you. You came up to Ben Wheeler on this trip. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about choosing the right hog hunting guide outfitters and what to look for, what not to look for. And we're going to try to not piss off a bunch of people in the process. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if wow. you're, if you're a hog, if you're a hog hunting guide, uh, take a lot of this with a grain of salt. Um, but we do get a lot of requests. I, I get a, every day yeah. I get messages, uh, to want to know if I, I do uh, guided hog hunts and I'm going to tell you the answer, uh, and the reasons why I tell them that I don't, uh, do guided hunts. Uh, but we'll get all into that very soon, but you know, we've got a lot of good things coming up. We've got some, uh, you are going on vacation for a couple of weeks. We've talked about that. You're going to New Mexico. We've got shows lined up and planned. We were just, uh, on the phone with one of our upcoming interviews. Um, the, the guys from sniper hog lights, uh, we were doing a little pre-show call and we're excited to have them on the show because there's, uh, a lot of requests for uh, more information about night vision, and people are very interested about upgraded IR lights, and that they make some of the best. They do. We've got a lot of stuff planned, a lot of good stuff, and so stay tuned for that. But uh, I want to say a couple quick things that, um, well, some of this has to do with our hunt, some of it doesn't, but uh, <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. But um, on this hunt, uh, Hans and I were actually able uh, to get our hands on the soon-to-be-released Pulsar Trail Laser Range Finder 2, the second edition, the XP50, XP50. LRF. Uh, man, that thing looked really, really good. We got to hunt with it, and uh, I spent some time behind it. Very impressed. So, folks, if you are... You know, on a back order list or want to get on a back order list for that, uh, you know, let us know at Outdoor Legacy. But they will be coming soon. They're going to be trickling in. Uh, this was one of the, the first production units, a demo, but it looked great. All new magnesium housing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just like the XP50 Thermion. So it's a two power base mag, all the same features color palettes, all that stuff. It is just a Thermion yeah. XP50 in a new trail magnesium housing body with a laser range finder, $59.99. Uh, there'll also be an XQ50, which is going to be mm -hmm. a 3.5 power, again, just like the Thermion XQ50. It'll be $42.99. But anyway, we just got to spend a little bit of time behind that. And to be honest with you, it's exactly what we thought it was going to be. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, if you've, I mean, I don't, yeah. it was exciting to see it and to see how well it performed. Uh, and we were actually in some really bad, humid, nasty conditions. I mean, I say nasty, it wasn't raining, but it was, it was mm. humid and it, it performed really, really well. So, uh, really excited about that. Yeah, we, we did get a chance to take it out for a while. And, uh, I, we, you and I got a very quick glimpse of it, um, a while back, several months ago around shot show time. So, uh, but that was just a prototype. So this was, this we was actually the real got to deal. see, they got to see the real deal. So, uh, but, uh, let's, let's get into this hunt, this Ben Wheeler, Texas hunt, because, uh, ain't no this, hogs up there. Ain't no <laughs> hogs in Ben Wheeler. Ben Wheeler, <laughs> the official hog capital of Texas. It is the it's official been, hog capital. It's of been Texas. failing me. It's when I go up You're there, bad luck. it's no, I'm going to tell y'all what it is. I know what it is. Hans, if, and I, I said this, and this is true. I told some other guys. If Hans was taking his grandma out to hunt, and she was going to kill her first hog ever, and Hans showed up five minutes early and the hogs were there, he would shoot them. He wouldn't wait on her. So I know what it is. Hans just kills all the hogs and I get up there and there's nothing but scraps. That's you that's say exactly. that. <laughs> but my my daughter, who was probably 
10 at the time, we took her out to shoot her first hog. And she she was lined up on a hog about 50 yards away. And she was just sitting there, you know, trying to get steady and probably trying to fight down <laughs> some nerves. I was on a rifle next to her because I always, if I got a kid with me and that hog charges after they shoot, I want to be there to put it down. You know, I don't want it charge Because a lot of times when you shoot, hogs will run towards where you're shooting for some reason. Even if but, it's uh, accidental, it's still not good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they probably don't know they're doing it. They're, it's accidental. So I was lined up on a rifle next to her. She was beside me. And I was like, all right, you know, go ahead and shoot whenever you want to. Well, she sat there. It felt like about five minutes. <laughs> it was probably more like 45 seconds or a minute, which is a long time. <laughs> I'm not going to say I knocked her off the rifle and shot the hog, but <laughs> <laughs> she, she, uh, her old engine locked up and she couldn't pull the trigger. So I, that thing started running off and I just shot and dropped it as it was running off. And I looked up, I was like, sorry, baby, but that hog was about to get away. And she's like, no, it's okay. I, I, I didn't, she's like, I couldn't get it, uh, steady enough to shoot. She was, she was a, I felt a little bit bad. You know, it's kind of like knocking your a kid off the rifle to a shoot. A <laughs> little bit bad. You hear this, folks? So y'all know I'm telling the truth now. <laughs> you are. So no hogs get a pass with me. So, uh, Jason, I, I'm not going to say this has been planned for a long time, but it was planned for at least a week um, that he was going to come up here. And so I've had more hogs on camera this past month than I've ever had. And we've, like, it's, we've talked about the new property that we picked up and that we got, you know, where we dug the grave. And by the way, thank you all for watching that episode. It's got a, a lot of views and listens. And I, <laughs> I thought that it would, but it, it turned out really good and really funny. But, uh, so at this new property, I've been baiting them up. I mean, I, you know, I, I've taken my buddy out there. We've passed on hogs. There was hogs that were sleeping, that we just didn't shoot. We just drove right on by. I mean, sitting, I felt like I was at a zoo while I was getting ready for you to come because I was just sitting there getting videos with different scopes and baiting them up, spending, felt like I spent like $500 on corn baiting all these hogs. Uh, but I mean, they were going through a 50 pound bag of corn a day and wow. I had two different groups coming in. But the weird thing about these hogs that I was baiting up uh, for you coming down uh, because we wanted, you know, to, obviously shoot hogs and get some good video, but, um, they've been coming out during the day, uh, not at night. They would come out like from anywhere from noon to seven thirty, and every, every day, every night. Well, you and I, we got out there early. We got out there. Oh gosh, probably about eight o'clock or so, or close oh, to yeah, eight o'clock. Well before dark hogs were, as when we pulled up, hogs were asleep on the bait pile. I mean, asleep. We drive over there, gone <laughs> nowhere to be yeah. found we we pick up we go to another part of the property to set up to start calling and i get another picture they're there at the bait pile again we go back gone i mean it's just <laughs> it was it, it, was, it was like whack-a-mole we were in one was. place and they were in another and and you know you can't sit there all night long we stayed there yeah. for 45 minutes the first time 30 oh, yeah. minutes you can't just stand in one spot waiting and this was on a when Jason was talking about really poor conditions. It had East Texas, anywhere really on, on the Southeast part of the United States, this time of year, it's going to be humid, <laughs> really mm -hmm. humid every night, just about Well, it had been doing some on and off rain the day before it was really humid. And we were hunting and doing, uh, doing uh, a lot of our stuff on this, uh, what used to be a power line right away. So it's, I mean, from one end to the other, it's put could be 800 yards, maybe oh, further. Least, it's a yeah, long way least. down there, but there is no air in that right away. No. I mean, it is, you know, 50, 60 foot tall trees on either side. Mm -hmm. And it's probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 yards wide all the way down yeah. for 800 yards. No air moving in there. It's humid as all get out. No breeze. I mean, it was just, you, you'd go in there and if you left the right of way and you went out into the open field to go hunt, you felt like there was a 10 it, degree it was, difference in, yeah, in temperature. It was and bad. Just to get a little breeze on you. So we stayed at that property till almost midnight. We did not see a dang thing. We saw nothing. And <laughs> it was disappointing. Deer. Yeah, because I felt bad because, you know, Jason took me down to his house. Uh, we shot a, bu a bunch of hogs down there. And uh, I told him to come up here because there was all kinds of hogs uh, 
and there has been, and I've, I've shot more at that property since, since last week, since you left. Uh, but thanks. We stayed awesome. there forever. <laughs> and the only thing that we found of any interest were the gigantic spiders that we were knocking as we were driving through oh, trails. Oh <laughs> man. There was the biggest spiders across these trails. It's, I yeah, felt like I had spider webs all the way from my toes, you, all the way up to you my You know, head. you you joke about that, but I got on my Ranger this evening, and when I sat down in the driver's seat, I had to, I literally didn't see it, but I got right in the middle of a spider web. So those spiders yeah. are still on there making webs. It was a mess. But. So we left that property, and I was like, that's okay, because the next property that we were going to is money. And this place that we were going to is a couple hundred acres, uh, some cattle on it, but it's it was somewhat freshly mowed part of it. There's a creek that goes right through it. There's typically always hogs down in here. The landowner, it did look I good. It did. It looked prime. Uh, it had woods all around, and it was kind of the the low spot was in a little bowl. So you know, there's collects moisture, and the hogs are rooting around in there. And in my head, I was like, we're definitely going to see something here. I didn't want to say that, but in my head, I was like, we're got to see something here. This spot's money. We go over there, and you know what was weird? We were driving county roads, and we were glassing just down county roads, and we hardly we saw two hogs yeah. as we were driving. We were driving fifty miles an hour, but we only saw two hogs in any field driving fifteen minutes there and back. That was kind of weird. It, maybe it was just one of those off nights, but it was a bad night. We went to this other property, no hogs. We called forever, no hogs. We did, we did get one coyote. One stupid yeah. enough coyote to come out within seventy yards, and and uh, that was it. it. That coyote lined up in front of the angriest fire and most frustrated fire in line <laughs> that that yeah. unlucky it, coyote could find because we were all one forty five in the morning. Yeah, we, we were happy. we were wore out, and I tell you, if there had been an armadillo cross in front of us, it was going to be dead. <laughs> so That's true. We we did end up getting a coyote, but we did not. Oh, I take that back. We saw one hog at the very end of the night. We went back to the camp house where, oh, yeah. where Jason was saying, and we were just sitting out on the front porch talking, and I had the collar out, and a, a big boar stuck his nose up out by a tree line. All I could see was his head and his ears, and about that time that I got a scope on him, he had turned and started running off, but I, he was, from his tip of his nose to his tail, he was pretty dang long i could tell he's pretty big that was the only pig we saw all night and we did get one coyote and we got to drive around and sweat like crazy yeah all night and long. got in the bed at about so, 345 and 345 it was late we were all wore out and tired but didn't even have any hogs to show but didn't well have any I, and i'd have I, been bragging for a week about all these hogs that i had showing up th- yeah um, that was the worst sending, part. i was sending jason pictures and you know, every day of all these groups of pigs coming in and they, uh, they, these are the weirdest things. These are, they were not, they're obviously not pressured enough because they're not coming out at night. They're eating all day long, eating all, all my corn up and then going and bedding up somewhere probably close to water at night. And, uh, man, I feel like I just, I feel like I let you down, man. I'm, well, was, you know, that, that's, uh, Hey, this is actually a perfect example of our show. It's <laughs> exactly. uh, it's still hunting, even if it's a guided hunt, even if they got the hogs mm-hmm. staked out. Uh, there's no guarantees, and that's why it's called hunting. Yep. And so, so if you're not if you're not having a good time, even when you're not killing any hogs, then uh, or yep. deer or whatever it is you're hunting, then you're probably doing it for the wrong reason. So so that leads us into our topic. Uh, I get people all the time, every day, ask me about doing guided hunts, and I would love to. Um, I would love to do guided hunts. Here's a couple of the main reasons that, uh, well, probably three reasons. First of all, I just don't have a lot of time <laughs> to do it with the, with what we do on the podcast, with all the hunting we do and scopes, uh, sales and, uh, and that kind of stuff. I just don't have enough time. But the other reason is, uh, and that's not to say that you can't find a guide in, in East Texas or anywhere else that you're not going to have a good, uh, place to hunt sure. but my area is not the most fun hunting conditions no. <laughs> you know you are doing a lot of a lot of walking a lot of going through tight trails th- thick brush not very many big open fields with hogs in them i mean it is close quarters hunting 
and it is brutal. And Jason knows just from living out in this area his whole life, but people that come out here for the first time and hunt, they're like, man, this is, this is tough because it's work. all the, all the videos they see online are these guys walking out into this big 500 acre flat field and shooting at a group of hogs until they run out of ammo, you know? Yeah. And so that's another reason it's just not great conditions here. Um, and I just, I get down on myself if I don't put people on hogs every time. He does. <laughs> and I, st- he, I stress He gets out. serious about it. I mean, he feels oh, I like do. I can tell the later in the night we go, we're not seeing hogs. Because I know, yeah, I'm not I know phased, Jason's like, you know. yeah, Jason's like, hey, I, I just, if we could see a little, you know, a few hogs at nine o'clock and then go yeah. back and hang out, I'll be good. And it's me, exactly I'm like. exactly right. Yeah. My, my goal is, is we go out there at dark, we shoot some hogs. We get our picture taken. We go back to the camp house. We eat junk food, have a drink. I mean, this is a good, but so far that's never happened. (laughs) I mean, Mama Robertson made cookies. That's right. She brought, and we had cookies and all kinds of snacks. We had all kinds of junk food. We didn't even get to open half of it because we're hunting till all hours in the morning. And when I don't see hogs, it makes it, it aggravates me. So I'm like, we're not going until we see something, but so we'll get into, Jason, let's get into this list. We, we've talked about, I'll let you kick it off, but we're talking about, there's a lot of people from all over the country that want to come to Texas to hunt hogs. And, and we get questions all the time uh, of recommendations. Uh, we do know of some outfitters. We're not going to talk specifically about them right now, but we're going to tell you exactly what to look for. And I'll let you get right into it. Yeah. So I get asked about this a lot because I'm on the phone all day with customers talking about scopes and so a lot of guys are like, hey, uh, you know, I want to go hunting somewhere. And sometimes these guys are actually even in Texas. Maybe they're just looking for a spot. They don't own their own land. But usually it's guys from out of state, um, a lot of times up north or somewhere, maybe out west where they don't have hogs. And they're like, man, I'd love to come to Texas. I'd love to come down that way and kill some hogs. At the same time, I've had a lot of guys who've told me stories about, oh, man, we came down there last year, a couple of years ago, had a big hunt, whatever. So I've I've learned a lot listening to stories from those guys. Of uh, so they're telling me about things that are going on in our backyard that mm-hmm. that I've never thought of because that you know I, I don't obviously go out on guided hunts, but I've heard all these experiences that have made me go, oh wow, I would have yeah. never thought about that. I mean, uh, a, a lot stories. of things, yeah. some nightmare stories. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and if we have time, I'll tell a couple of those stories uh, without incriminating anybody. <laughs> okay, but good. Yeah. 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 No, I won't incriminate anybody. But so I think the first thing that uh, I would tell you to look for and to be uh, alert for is when you decide, hey, I want to come down to Texas or, you know, I want to go hunting. The first thing you need to decide is, uh, and this is, again, something that I hadn't even really considered before is do you want to go on a high fence hunt or do you want to go on a low fence, which we would call mm-hmm. like a, a, a fair chase or a, you know, mm-hmm. open game, low fence hunt, meaning nothing to keep the hogs in. And uh, when we say high fence, it doesn't always have to be an eight foot fence to keep a hog yeah. in, but you know what I mean? That's generally yeah. what they're going to have. Hog panel. There's so, a lot of places ho- that are hog paneled. That exactly. Are, so you know, four uh, the, the, the issue, this is totally up to you how you want to mm-hmm. do it, but here's what happens on a high fence. Okay. And I better give this other caveat. There are some high fence places in Texas that are thousands of acres. Oh, yeah. thousands. You can get lost mm-hmm. in the middle of this high fence. I mean, you, you might not find the fence if you wanted to. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not necessarily talking about that kind of place. If you want to go, and that, that may be within your standards of, of what you call, you know, normal wild hunting, that's fine. Uh, mm-hmm. But a lot of these hog places are small, high <laughs> fences. Some of them, I've heard stories and, and kind of even looked some of these places up to see. They may be as small as 50 acres. Some of them may be two or 300 acres, but they're high fenced. And what's happening is they're having uh, guys on the outside trap hogs. And these guys come into the high fence right. and they open their trailer, let the hogs out, and they get paid. So they're catching them on the outside, bringing them in. Then you come in and you pay to hunt those hogs. Now, you are killing uh, wild Texas hogs, but they've been trapped somewhere and transported, and they're in a fence and they can't get out. Uh, I'm not passing judgment on it. 
you decide what you want to do. Normally, yeah. those kind of places are going to be more of a guaranteed type hunt, obviously. Uh, you've got a lot better chance. They're normally going to be coming to feeders. You're normally going to be sitting in a, a deer stand or a hog stand or whatever it is at that point. And it's just going to be sitting there, you know, blind hunting, waiting on hogs to come out to the feeder. You shoot, they run off, that kind of deal. Well, so... I, you know, let's let's talk about that yeah. for a minute because I, I think there there's a couple of, of advantages to high fence. Um, not that all of them are bad, and not that we're saying sure. all of them are bad. You know, I think you mentioned one of them is that you're pretty much guaranteed to kill a hog. Mm -hmm. I, I think though, if you're if you've got a a young child um, that is this is their fun, first hunting experience, sure. and they don't get to do this very much, you know they're you know, if, if uh, you're getting them out into the into hunting for the first time, you know, there you're probably going to be sitting in a stand hunting over a feeder. Mm -hmm. That for a kid, if if my kid was hunting, um, that might probably be a better experience to begin with uh, doing something like that at a high fence sure. place. So there, there's a couple of advantages to y doing that. Yeah, and I would say, again, I, I want to give this caveat of – how big is this fence? And I mean, yeah. this is the ethical decision you've got to make for yourself. And again, while Hans and I both are not high fence hunters, uh, deer or hogs or whatever, it's not normally our thing. I, I do want to be fair is that I have seen some high fence places in Texas that, that I'm serious are huge. Yeah. So it's not always just because there's a fence means that it's a canned hunt. It's not, not right. always like that, but that is something to be aware of uh, because I have heard of some where the guy told me that, you know, th the stand was literally in the corner of the high fence where he's looking at wire within 20 yards on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you could throw a rock to the other side of the place. So it was, it was a yeah. pin, you know, in that. Yeah. So yeah, find out, some, ask, yeah. There are some high places like you were talking about that are very big high fence place. And they, a lot of those places are, um, you know, selling exotic hunts and exotic yep. deer hunts and they want hogs off their property, you know, and sure. they're having people come in and pay a, obviously a deep discounted price for shooting a hog, but it serves two purposes there for them is they get those hogs off of their high fence place and people get to come in and shoot them. Exactly. I, I, yeah. Those are, those are good. So, places. so the, the point I'm making is this, when you're looking for an outfitter, you need to figure out if, if that's, something you're against, like, I don't want that. Or if I am, I want to be a huge place. Ask those questions when you're mm -hmm. doing your research. If that's just say, I don't want that. I'm not driving to Texas for that. Then fine. Ask that and get that checked off. I think the, the other thing that kind of rolls into that is uh, I'm going to say that there's, there's three types of outfitters and there's probably a lot more if we really broke this down, but these are the three that I'm familiar with places that, that, you know, people I've talked to and, and again, talking to customers who have come down, I would say you're going to start with nobody get offended out there, but I'm going to say it's, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, you know, bubble with a thermal scope and a four wheeler. All right. Yeah. And so this would kind of be, you know, like if, if Hans or I took you hunting, we're bubble. I mean, I know a All lot right. of guys that make their beer money by doing this kind of stuff. So. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm not ragging on you, but I've sold scopes to a lot of these guys. Yeah. And if, if Hans and I took you hunting, we would be Bubba. We would be, yeah. I mean, we would literally be taking you to our property or property that we have access to hunt on. And, and that's what these guys do. So they're not, I mean, this guy's got a full-time job working 50, 60 hours a week and at night or on the weekends, he'll take somebody out, jump on his side-by-side -side or the back of his four-wheeler and, you know, go down the road and, and go into a couple of places and, you know, go out to some fields and see if there's hogs there. That just, that may be it. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, there's nothing fancy about it. You're just kind of going hunting with somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. A lot of those guys are very successful. So that that's one one way. Yeah. And those those are usually usually your less expensive hunts are those types. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. I've, I've seen them going for about $200 a gun per night. So Sure. And so then I would think that the next uh step would kind of be the the in between. This would be a legitimate outfitter. Um, he's doing this a lot. He's running a lot of hunts and he's got access to a whole lot of land and it's a, a legitimate 
turnkey operation with equipment, with mm -hmm. drivers, trucks. I mean, it, it's a legitimate setup, but they don't have a lodge. They don't have mm -hmm. any kind of, you know, any place to put you up. So mm -hmm. you would be, you know, you're on your own. Find the motel, find the hotel down the road, whatever it is. Uh, so that is, there's more of those guys because obviously having a lodge and all that's much more expensive. But th that's a, you know, very legitimate outfitter. And there's a lot of guys like that. And then this third class is that person I just explained to. I think it's just like that, except they've got a lodge. They've got everything. Mm -hmm. It's a, right. it's three meals a day and a nice place to sleep and, you know, all of that. So you're getting the whole experience. You're showing up and you get it all. And obviously that is going to probably be the most expensive because I mean, food and, and, you know, board is, is not, not cheap, oh, yeah. Yeah. uh, room and board. So, uh, that's the third option. And so just starting out here, when you're looking, my advice is to decide what kind of hunting you want to do and, how you want to do it and kind of what fits your budget and start asking those questions when you start looking around. Yeah. And you know, you can do that through checking out websites. Um, there's a lot of, uh, if you're in the hog hunting community in the, on the social media platforms, a lot of asking around, if you are on a forum and you ask for a good hog hunting guide and you know, five people give you the same name. That's probably a good place to start looking as far as sure. a hog guide, you know, because people will, you know, good word of mouth and that type of stuff spreads websites, uh, reviews on websites. We know sometimes those can be a little questionable as far as the, you know, how honest the re reviews are, but definitely check there. Um, I, I would also, I want to talk about something else and we kind of briefly mentioned it before, but, you need to decide on what type of hog hunt you want to do. Um, we talked about East Texas, how difficult it is. Uh, there are people doing guided hog hunts in East Texas and, and pretty good ones. Um, but if you ask Jason or I, what's the best kind of hog hunting terrain? That's a place that the community or the region does a lot of farming, uh, mm -hmm. you know, big wide open fields as, you know, pretty flat. You know, there's some West Texas places that aren't very flat. They've got some canyons and plateaus, but somewhat flat, but you know, you want to question what part of Texas and there's a lot of good hunting in North Texas, West Texas. I know South, South Texas has some, it can be difficult down there as well. But I, you know, when I, you, I went to West Texas recently and I mean, it is wide open. You can see forever the fields are freshly cut, not all the time, but when we went, yeah, they are. I, and I, I can imagine, yeah, being able not, to hunt out there would be awesome. I want to say this too. This is something that I know a lot of our, our listeners who aren't from Texas and maybe never been here don't quite understand. Um, and, and I know other states are this way, so I'm, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be the, the big head Texan here that think we're the only way the state. But um I'm going to tell you all something you don't know, and that's Texas is a huge state, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, have, we, have we mentioned that before? No. Okay. Texas is a huge state, and it is broke up into a lot of different regions and even sub-regions. That's why we talk about East Texas. Uh, and, and there's even within East Texas, there's Northeast Texas. There's mm -hmm. the what we call like Deep East Texas, where I'm at. Then we've got Southeast Texas. So every region is is broke up again mm -hmm. because it is so big. And th this state is very, very different terrains. It's like a whole bunch of states crammed into one. It so is. it goes all the way from, you know, North Texas, the Panhandle, which is just plains, farm country, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I mean, I'm talking plowed ground farm country, you, you know, you come on down to West Texas and you've got these flat or rolling grass plains. Then you get into like Hans mentioned, you get these canyons uh, flat on the top, and then, you know, then canyons down there. You come out through central Texas, you've got the hill country, you've got uh, you know, North central Texas, which mm -hmm. you can again, get into some, some farm country, uh, a little bit of, you know, trees, but, but not like East Texas. Tree. I mean, I, I'm just, yeah. the point I'm making is it's wildly different. And where we're at is just the, the, the East Texas 
is just like you imagine most of the South, Georgia, Alabama, when you're talking about, you know, pine trees, hardwood trees in the bottoms. So that's why when we say East Texas hunting, yeah, we're hunting cow pastures, we're hunting hay fields, but we're also hunting small log sets or log roads mm -hmm. or right of ways or whatever these things are. And so that hunting is a lot different than, you know, Hans was getting into this when you're in parts of South Texas, and I'm not talking about brush country, South Texas, I'm talking mm -hmm. about farm country, South Texas, which that exists as well. Those are the kind of places that are probably going to be more fun. You're going to be able to get on bigger fields, anywhere there's agriculture mm -hmm. with actual row cropping. That's where you're going to yep. a lot of times get into more action and being able to get on big groups and big fields. And yep. so uh, again, I didn't mean to butt in, but, but you just got to realize Texas is very, very different in all of our terrains and going, you know, an hour, one direction can vastly change Absolutely. that terrain. So you kind of need to do some research about the areas that you're looking at and maybe you don't know. So you're just looking at outfitters. We'll find where that outfitter is, find what that terrain is and see if that's something you're interested in and then ask him all those questions. Yeah, definitely. If, if you get into the agriculture uh, hub of Texas, you're going to bring in a lot of hogs just from them in those fields, eating up the crops. The only farms really that we have around me are tree farms. And, uh, you know, basically cattle is the big thing out here. Yeah, cattle, ranches cattle in East Texas and yeah. hay fields and different things like that. But, but, uh, but even it, those, I mean, Hans knows this, even where we were hunting, um, the other night, even when you get on these big fields, God intended all of this land to be trees, okay? Yeah. So anything that's cleared, we cleared it. Man cleared it. And so there's still likely to be trees in the field or mm -hmm. a creek juts and turns this way or there's a wood line. And so it's not like they're all big, square, perfect fields. Mm -hmm. They rarely look that way. There's, yep. you know, you can see 400 yards that way and 150 yards this way and 200 yards, you know, so... It's it's very very different terrain. Well, and uh, so that's when when you're researching uh, hog yep. hunting outfitters, definitely look at the region that they're they're in, located in. Understand the conditions and the terrain that you're going to be hunting in, and if you want to be eaten up by mosquitoes and walk in, you know, knee deep water all night, then by all means come to East Texas. East uh, Texas. <laughs> if you want to drive around in a truck all night and step off and shoot a bunch of hogs probably want to go to North or West Texas <laughs> but, yeah. mm -hmm. and there's some other places too. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But the last uh, thing that we wanted to talk about um, is night hunting. Cause you, you know, you would think that, Oh, everybody, you would think everybody wants to come here tonight and to night hunt, but not all outfitters are set up for it. So. No, I would say that there's yeah. probably more places for hog hunting that do not do any night hunting. Right. Um, I've talked to guys who, literally drove hours, I mean, booked the whole hunt, full meal deal, show up, get here, and they're all excited and don't find out till they get there because they didn't ask. And don't get me wrong, I, I can see how you would make this mistake. All they had ever seen was night hunting for hogs. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're planning on. And they say, what time are we going out tonight? And they say, what are you talking about? We're going to eat steaks and, you know, sit around the campfire tonight. And it's like, well, we're not going hunting. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? We don't hunt at night on this ranch. And, you know, it's like this, yeah. <laughs> we've had a failure to communicate. Mm -hmm. And so these guys were like, this was, I mean, we killed hogs, but only during the day. And that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to sleep all day and hunt all night. So that's a really big thing to ask is, um, are we going to hunt at night? Do you hunt at night? Um, is that the primary way? A and mm -hmm. then the next question is going to be, okay, um, if the weapons are provided, do you have night vision scopes, thermal scopes? What are those scopes? What are we going to be green, using? Or a green yeah. flashlight. <laughs> or a <laughs> green take, flashlight. Taped yeah, in the rifle. Duct yeah. taped on there. And, <laughs> and then the next question also is, if you're going to night hunt, is it, can I use my own equipment? because I know some places do not allow that. And I've had some mm -hmm. guys tell me, you know, I bought this big fancy scope to go on a big hunt and I got down there and they said, Oh no, you got to use our equipment. Yeah. And so again, it's just another question 
that you need to ask uh, before you, you load up the, the, the truck. And, you know, so I, I'll tell a, a couple real quick stories here. And I know we don't have long kind of wrap this, but I'll tell, tell one good one. This guy told me that um, he was a customer that him and several buddies had you know, booked this hunt and they got in an extended cab Chevrolet pickup, six grown men, average size, over 200 pounds, oh, an extended man. cab pickup, oh. all, all their gear. And they drove like 14 hours. Mm. Yeah. To oh, get gosh. down here, they, they show up and they said it was a disaster. Mm. It was a, some little bitty, like 75 acre, high fence place they said they they pull up and they like you know the high fence deal they open it up they go in and there's people following them with trailers with hogs in them that they I trapped going, i thought yeah. you were going to say that they were telling them to hurry up and shut the gate so the hogs don't run out of the it, gate he said it was that bad <laughs> he said in and inside this little bitty place was the 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 whatever you want to call it the cabin or the camp house on yeah. this little bitty acreage he said so they pull up and like here's the camp house and right outside the camp house he said there's this big gravel turnaround and that these guys are pulling up in these trailers like right by their trucks opening the gate hogs are running out and he said it was like a zoo they couldn't hunt at night. They could only hunt during the day. They could only hunt over feeders. He said the hogs were so, so smart to the feeders. They mm -hmm. didn't want to come in because they're getting shot every day. It yeah. was, oh man, it, it was really one of those deals where it had been a few years and the guy had, you know, kind of seen the comedy in it now. So he was laughing, telling the story, but he said they oh, were, and they paid good money for it too. It wasn't mm -hmm. cheap. And it was just kind of one of those that, you know, that looks really good, the brochure, but it, it wasn't all that it was cracked <laughs> up to be. And so I've heard enough of those stories that have been like, do uh, your research before you come. Can talk you to imagine people. six no. grown men in an extended cab extended Chevy? Cab no. For four, can you <laughs> imagine the smell that was floating mm. around in that truck for 14 uh, hours? Can you just <laughs> imagine just crammed in there like a bunch of sardines? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, no, goodness. so do, do your research and, and I, I will say um, I think there are some really good guys we're not trying to scare you to death I think there's some good guys doing this some good places to hunt um, and and I would say this if you go with a good outfitter and this is somebody that you've got good reviews on you, you mean you know they're good y'all show up and you don't see any hogs and you don't kill any hogs and I don't care if you're there for three or four days that's hunting Okay. If, if you go, uh, there, there's a mistake that people think that there's these hogs are so thick that every single time you're going to go out and you're going to shoot hogs. And it's, this is no different than, than deer hunting or something else. Sometimes it all comes together, a perfect plan. Sometimes you can't find one. So I don't yeah. care if it's deer hunting, duck hunting, whatever it is. Uh, if it's, you know, if it doesn't all come together, don't automatically blame the outfitter and say that there's no hogs or that they shot them all out or whatever. Cause just like this week with Hans, I mean, <laughs> I was about to we say, were, that's... we were in a spot with a lot of hogs. I mean, he's got picture proof. And as soon as I left, he's killing them, you know, oh, 24 yeah. hours later, just the way it goes. Sometimes. I've gone out there two different times after you left and, and shot hogs, but yeah, it's, I do think a lot of the videos you see on YouTube are a little misleading of all the hogs that people are shooting at all the time because it is hunting. You got to go out and find them. And sometimes that involves uh, going in places that are not very fun to hunt. Sometimes that involves staying out till four o'clock in the morning, um, which you and I aren't, don't typically do no, don't <laughs> like we did like last it week. at all. But, uh, yeah, it's, it, it is hunting and it's not, it's not easy. The hogs are smart. They, they got, uh, you know, good noses. They can smell you from a long way away. You got to play the wind, right? It's just not, you know, pull up the van and everybody hop out and start jump, you know, shooting. It is, and it uh, might be that way, but that's a, some, that's yeah, a good places. night. That's a but, good uh, night too. You, there's, it is hunting and it's not, uh, not always easy hunting. No. Well, folks, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, and, and I'm going to say real quick, um, we do know some guys who I believe are, are good guides who are good outfitters who are mm -hmm. honest, kill a lot of hogs. 
And the one reason, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this, the one reason that we don't do a lot of referrals or any referrals and say, oh, this is the guy you got to call, whatever, is that we have nothing to gain and everything to lose. Yeah. So if I tell you uh, one of these guys who I think is a great guy and I know they kills more hogs than anybody in Texas, but you come and you, for whatever reason, don't kill those hogs and you have a bad experience, you're going to go, yeah, that old sorry Jason and Hans told me to go to that guy. And I got absolutely nothing out of it. So exactly. I, I, don't, I, I don't hunt with these guys. So I'm not going to refer you to, to a bunch yep. of different people. Do your research. Uh, the, the internet is an amazing place with, with tons of great info out there. So go see what you can find. But I uh, hope this has helped a little bit. And uh, this is just one of the topics that, that we get asked about. If you're new to listening to the mm -hmm. Late Night Vision Show, we talk about all kinds of crazy things uh, from hog guides to Hans digging up random <laughs> graves he finds in the woods to scope reviews. But we're glad that you're here and we hope that you'll come back uh, again and check us out on another episode. Uh, Hans is, uh, y'all probably know him from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel. That is H-A-N-S-E-T-X. Go to YouTube and search for that. He is putting out reviews all the time on different scopes, different optics. He's also putting tons of hog and coyote hunting videos out, these ones that make it look really, really easy. He just released one last Friday yeah. uh, with, how what, 20-something hogs? How many hogs? Yeah, 22 it? hogs. More, I've got 22 a bunch hogs. of, yeah, I've got a bunch of uh, coyote uh videos I need to get out too, but yeah, it was 22 hogs on that one. Yeah, with I was the, a little uh, upset in that video because uh, some of those hogs uh, I was yeah. actually shooting, I did not get any credit for those and oh. I didn't see my name in the credits. I was a little upset, uh, but that's okay. We'll talk about out, that after the show. Outdoor but, Legacy gets yeah. credit on every video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it, it was a, a, a great one. So go check that out. You can subscribe to his YouTube channel. You can go over to Instagram and again, search for Hans ETX, and you'll find him there posting all kinds of pictures of uh, all the hogs and coyotes that he kills. And if you're looking for thermal scopes, night vision scopes, anything related to that, give us a call at Outdoor Legacy. The number is 877-350-1818. Hans and I will be glad to talk to you, answer any questions that you've got. And we uh, kind of like to joke and say we take the confusion of night vision and thermal because it is confusing and we're glad to help you and answer any yep. of those questions. And so we would be honored to have your business when you get ready to make a purchase uh, in the night vision and thermal stuff. And you can find uh, Outdoor Legacy on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all those places. Uh, but we're back here every Thursday, both Hans and I. That's right. And thank you all for joining us. Next uh, week is we're starting into August already. And uh, wow. that means we are one week uh, away or one week closer to sending Jason off to New Mexico for vacation. Uh, we look forward to getting all of his pictures, uh, vacation pictures with him wearing a mask. So please, uh, <laughs> Jason, please make sure you send those to us so we can share them on the show. Yeah, good luck. Uh, but we, <laughs> exactly. We will see y'all next Thursday for episode 118 of the Late Night Vision Show. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe in the fields and keep making them bacon pancakes. <laughs>